सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली अराउंड दिस टाइम लास्ट ईयर वी वर ऑल स्पेकुलेटिंग अबाउट व्हाट विल हैपन टू द कांग्रेस पार्टी आफ्टर द चेंज ऑफ गार्ड on the 20th of october last year he was mallikarjun kharge was elected congress president and on the 26th he became the first non gandhi to helm the party in 25 years well on thursday he will complete one year in office in this episode of politically correct uh, let's discuss how the congress has or hasn't changed with a non gandhi at the helm on thursday don't expect any gala cake cutting ceremony you will not see congress leaders making a queue outside his outside his office or home with bouquet and garlands they would rather praise him in private real or imagined at least three eyes well something like five eyes international alliance watch them all the time at least that's what they believe but don't blame their obsessions they are just being congressmen and congresswomen Away from the gaze of the three eyes or three pairs of eyes, these Congress leaders tell you in private how Kharge's first year has been a watershed period in many ways. No, the Gandhi family's grip on the party has not slackened. Look at the Congress Working Committee that uh, Kharge reconstituted. It has become an 84-member jumbo body because family loyalists had to be accommodated. to banish dissidents for for good kharge has not made any significant organizational overhaul at the top level because he can't drop rahul gandhi loyalists and paper tigers like if i have to take the names of uh, kc venugopal and randeep sujewala who either run away from electoral contests or lose even assembly polls remember how the congress and the allies uh, won 19 out of 20 lok sabha seats in kerala in 2019 the only seat that they did not win was alapura the seat held by kc venugopal he had refused to contest and he has remained the congress general secretary organization very powerful person in the congress today similarly surjewala lost the last two elections he contested from haryana so when it comes to venugopal and surjewalas of the congress mallikarjun kharge does look a bit helpless but he's not losing his sleep over this the gandhis for all their privileges have shown due respect for the post of the congress president for instance at party events they ensure that they wait for kharge to arrive and leave so what happens is if kharge has to come uh, you know he'll be informed that okay first the gandhis are coming so wait for 5 minutes or 10 minutes once the gandhis come then kharge is informed and then he comes similarly when he goes after the event so the gandhis go to kind of see him off so that kind of thing has been maintained by the gandhi family his unquestionable uh, loyalty to the family and the party has also been a contributing factor to the high trust quotient between him and the family this harmony with the gandhis marks a positive in mallikarjun kharge's first year as the party chief but his real achievement is uh, using his, his equation equation with the gandhis to implement what looks like poll strategist prashant kishore's 4m formula to revive the congress you remember i did an episode on this 4m messenger message machinery and mechanics let me talk about uh, the last two first the machinery and mechanics the party organization and the way it functions before kharge took over the congress looked like a drifting ship without a captain to take control or guide the crew leaders and workers did not know who to approach and how the gandhis remained largely inaccessible or reluctant to act and self proclaimed family loyalists 
were having a filled day. Ascending to the top party post, uh, Malikajun Kharge, a bigger loyalist, did not proactively disempower the these uh, loyalists. He only made their backroom games irrelevant by becoming a hands-on party chief who was all ears to workers and leaders. He isn't afraid to crack the whip if need be and doesn't believe in differing uh, decisions. In one year, Kharge has turned out to be a plain speaking president who could talk tough with the uh, Rajasthan chief minister Ashok Gehloth uh, over Dalit atrocities in his state. You know, see, in one of the interactions, he told uh, Ashok Gehloth, what face I, Dalit president of the Congress, showed to the people. That was when Ashok Gehloth told him that, you know, Ashok Gehloth had come out with a list of his achievements for the state. And then uh, Kharge reminded him that uh, I had sent three letters to, to you. You are beginning one letter. Those three letters about what about Dalit atrocities. So in that meeting, Kharge reminded him that what happened to those letters. You have to act on them. Because I, as Dalit, Dalit president, cannot really show my face to the people if these atrocities continue. So that kind of plain talking. He even instructed the chief minister to fulfill uh, rival uh, Sachin Pilot's demands. You remember uh, lodging cases against alleged uh, scams, uh, corruption uh, during the Raji government and other couple of uh, other, other uh, demands Sachin Pilot had. But at the same time, Kharge also told Pilot to have patience and win back party workers and leaders' trust. He told Pilot that, you know, he himself did not get the Karnataka chief minister's chair. But kept working in the party's interest. So the Congress president's tough non-partisan talks have ensured a truce between the two gladiators of Rajasthan politics. Gehlot is still at his provocative best, declaring uh, just last week that the CM's chair does not really let him go and it will not let him go in future either. But Pilot has so far chosen to follow the party president's advice. This no-nonsense approach of Kharge uh, resulted in the truce between uh, Siddharamaya and D.K. Shivkumar in Karnataka, between Bhupesh Baghel and uh, T.S. Singh Dev in uh, Chhattisgarh. Party insiders tell me that when a group of Telangana Congress chief uh, Revant Reddy's detractors <coughs> met Kharge to complain against him, Kharge was categorical. I mean, he told them that there will not be or there won't be any leadership change and they had to work with Revant Reddy. But he also gave a piece of his mind to Revant Reddy, instructing him to take all his colleagues along. When former Haryana CM, CM Bhupendra Huda's uh, detractors, Kumari Sel and Randeep Surjavala, came to complain, the Congress president gave a patient hearing, but did little to encourage them. He knows Huda remains the best uh, bet for the Congress in Haryana. So Kharge's style of functioning has worked. The Congress is looking relatively cohesive after a long time. Moreover, he is aware of the party's limitations. Congress is not a cadre-based party. It doesn't have the support of an organization like the Rashtra Sevak Sangh, a formidable supply chain for the BJP to draw ideologically committed cadres. The, the RSS also lays the groundwork for the BJP to build on. Given decades of neglect and decay in the Congress organization, the BJP model of grassroots structures like booth committees, panna pramoks, peers committees, I mean, that model is difficult, difficult to replicate overnight in the Congress. So Malikarjun Kharge is not therefore trying to bring a revolution in the Congress. He is building it one brick at a time, relying more on oiling the existing party machinery and motivating the current leadership to deliver. It seems to be working fine for the party for now. And you know, one of the Congress MPs was telling me the other day, and I'm quoting him, that the so-called booth committees and panna pramoks are overhyped. If people want a change, they do it, no matter what. The BJP has them, but where did they go in Delhi or Karnataka? The thing is, when the BJP wins, Amit Shah's organizational skill is given the credit. And when it loses, local leadership is blamed. But that was a Congress MP. That, that, that's not my view. But his assessment may not be 
fair to booth workers or panna pramukhs who can actually build a narrative on the ground so people can make up their minds but yes the effectiveness of the machinery and the mechanics largely depends on the other two m's in prashant kishor's playbook message and messenger prashant kishor argues that you know the messenger does not have to be the same person who runs the organization or engineers its mechanics their role is to strike a chord with the people and deliver the message effectively something prime minister narendra modi does for the bjp leaving the rest for amit shah and his team for long rahul gandhi was all in one but with kharge's ascension as congress president rahul assumed the messenger's role uh, full time and he seems to be enjoying it too whether he is modi's match or not is beside the point here modi's charisma makes him a great messenger but what also helps is the message he carries in the bjp case as pk says the message comprises hindutva hypernationalism and welfareism it has proved to be a formidable message for the opposition to outmatch as it is the congress does not have a coherent message yet it's largely banking on anti incumbency by focusing on failures of governance but it seems to be working on a message now it's experimenting with the obc politics it's experimenting with the rich versus poor narrative by attacking big businessmen and industrialists like gautam adani it's talking about freebies to match welfareism then you have love versus hate and kamal nath style i am a bigger hindu campaigns to counter hindutva jury is out on whether this message can counter modi's or the bjp's message in the 2024 election but kharge looks conscious of the importance of a coherent message his intervention in the party's stance on the ongoing middle east crisis came as uh, as an indicator so as per his directions congress's communications chief jaira ramesh had condemned the hamas uh, brutal attack on israel while also supporting the legitimate asp- aspirations of the palestinian people it was a perfectly balanced view then came a congress working committee resolution which skipped any mention of the hamas attack it only talk about palestinians and obviously it drew flack from political adversaries who found in it another instance of minority appeasement but congress insiders who work very closely with kharge uh, they have they tell me that you know he never really wanted a reference to the middle east crisis in the resolution it was mentioned because of some quote and quote clerical error at the time of its release and kharge was very upset about it and that's what they say well that kharge was upset was evident when he tweeted on thursday to reiterate the party's stand as spelled out by jairam ramesh originally kharge would surely know by now who got that paragraph inserted in the cwc resolution in a nutshell uh, kharge has set the 138 year old party's rusty wheels in motion in his first year to an extent by working on its machinery and mechanics there is nothing he can do about the party's messenger and whether or not rahul gandhi is a match for modi as for prashant kishor's last m message in 2024 that remains a big challenge for the congress results of the upcoming assembly elections may be crucial in this context as it is the congress is looking relatively better with the non gandhi at the helm that's all from me in this episode of politically correct thanks for watching